Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a scrap pillow. Now, I didn't make this pillow from scraps, but I'm calling it a scrappy pillow because it's so easy to use up all the extra pieces you have from other projects. These are scraps I had left over from the trellis quilt that I made recently. You may have seen this in our video. It's very common to have some pieces left over with every project. So these are some squares that I cut out from my extra pieces. And you can see how nice and scrappy they look with lots of different colors. Now we have a free pattern. It's the first link right below the video, and that will give you all the sizes you need so you can cut out all your pieces. Now I wrote the pattern so that you can use scraps or you can use a layer cake. That's what I'm gonna to use today as a layer cake because every time we have a scrappy pattern, we always get people who say, I wanna make this from some sort of pre-cut. So you can use layer cake squares if you have them. Now I've written the pattern so that you can make three patchwork blocks because I'm doing this out of the layer cake squares. If you're doing scraps, you can make one block, but it's just as easy to cut three blocks at a time. And then I won't have any wasted fabric. I don't like to cut just one block and have a lot of leftovers. So we can do three at a time here. So I need to pick out three lighter prints, three medium or darker prints, and then six contrast squares out of here. So let's pick out some nice ones here. This is a good one. So I've selected three lights, three mediums, and then I've got six squares here for the contrast. And the first thing I'm gonna work with is the mediums and the lights. And these are all going to get cut into strips that are one and three quarters inches wide. Now I'm cutting all six layers at the same time. If you're not comfortable cutting that many layers, just do less, do what you are comfortable cutting. Now all of these strips are going to get cut into different lengths. So the light prints here, we're gonna cut one strip, we're gonna do it into eight and three quarters, one at seven and a half, a lot of different sizes, and the darks get cut a little bit differently. And it's gonna be a lot easier if you just refer to the pattern as you cut these out. All of the mediums and lights here are cut into their various lengths. Now we're going to take three squares and we're going to cut out our contrast triangles and the center square. So I always, if I can, cut off a little bit here so I don't have to use those pinked edges. Then the first thing I'm going to cut is the center square, which is going to be two and a half inches. Now the rest of this fabric here is going to get cut into two and a quarter inch squares, and those are going to be for our triangles. We've got all of the patchwork pieces ready. Now we're gonna hold off on cutting these because those are gonna go when we finish off the pillow. But right now we're gonna work on this patchwork part. So the first thing we need to do is take our squares over to the ironing board. Each of these squares is going to get folded in half along its diagonal and then give it a nice steam press. Here's all the pieces for one block. So these are our little iron triangles, and this is the center square. Now we're basically making a log cabin block. You can't really see it looking like a log cabin here because we've got all those accents, but we're gonna start with the center square and we are going to put four pieces around it. So we're just gonna sew these four pieces on first. I like to pick up the first two pieces, put them right sides together, stitch them with a nice careful quarter inch, and then I'm going to set it right back down where it was so that I don't get my pieces out of order. I'm gonna finger press. All the seam allowances are going to go away from the center and this goes right back here. And now this piece will fit on there exactly. It's cut to the exact length that we are going to need. Again, finger press the seams toward the outside and put it right back where it came from and add the third piece. Now we'll add the fourth piece. Now that we have all four pieces all the way around the center, we're going to add one of these triangles. There's gonna be one on each corner. 
Now we're only gonna work with one at a time, so let's just move those for a second. And what you wanna do is line this up with the corner of your block, and then hold it in place and open it up. And we're gonna stitch right along that ironed line. I can see it very clearly. And I'm gonna stitch right on it or just to that side of it. Now, when you open this back up, which is pretty easy because it's been ironed, it should line up. If it doesn't line up, that means your stitching wasn't quite straight and you really should take out your stitching and redo it. Because if this ends up looking like that, now I'm exaggerating, your block will not end up square and we want nice square blocks. So put these on all four corners. Now is a good time to steam press this nice and flat and double check that your accent corners are all lined up all around the edges so it's still nice and square. Now I'm going to take that top layer, open it a little, and I'm gonna cut off the back two layers leaving a quarter inch seam allowance and that makes the block a lot less bulky. So do that for all four corners. Now we're ready to add four more pieces around the block. So these are going to go all around and they're going to fit on exact. And we're going to stitch them on and we're gonna to continue to press our seam allowances away from the center. Now that might mean, in some cases, that you're pressing towards the light rather than pressing towards the dark. But that's just a general guideline. The block really will lay flatter if you always press them away from the center on this particular block. So keep adding these all the way around. Now we're ready to add the accent. So again, four triangles all around the outside here. Be sure to iron this and trim off the excess in the back here. Now we just have one more row to put around. I've got these pieces here. I'll get them stitched on and then this block will be all done. The Patrick part is all done. Now we want to work on this border area. I've taken a half a yard. I've got a half a yard here and that's gonna do the border and the backing for the pillow. So I'm gonna put this on my cutting board. I'm gonna leave the selvages over there and I'm gonna cut the borders. I'm gonna cut them from the folded part of the fabric here. So I'm getting two at a time, and I'm going to cut them three inches wide. So I need four border pieces that are three inches wide, and then I'm gonna cut them down to the proper length. I think it's 10 inches and 15 inches, but we can check the pattern to make sure. So this is gonna be our pillow back, and then we'll get these cut to the right length. And that was correct. We need two of them at 10, and two of them at 15. So that's the borders. Now we're gonna take one of our reserved layer cake pieces here, and I'm gonna cut four squares that are four inches. So the easiest way for me to do that is just to fold it into quarters, make a couple fresh cuts, and get four, inch, four inches. So there's the four squares we need for the first pillow. These other ones are for the other two pillows we're gonna make afterward. Now we're going to iron these in half along the diagonal. We're just doing the same procedure that we did when we made the smaller accents. For the borders, we're going to sew the top and bottom on first. Now these longer borders, they are going to fit on the sides. Now all we have to do is put these accents in the four corners, stitch them on, iron it, and trim off that excess just like we did when we put these smaller accents on. Now we need a piece of scrap batting that's a little bit bigger than your pillow top here. We're gonna take this over to the machine. I'm going to stitch one quarter inch from the edge all around the outside here. That is going to hold everything together, but it's also going to give me a good line for when I finish my pillow so I can stitch very straight around the edges. 
Now we can quilt the pillow top if we like. I'm just going to go in the ditch around here, but this is a nice small project and you can really have a lot of fun quilting this if you want a lot of quilting to show. I'm just going in the ditch, which means I'm going right on top of my stitching, right in the intersection where the two pieces come together. And this will hold it together even if I don't want to do a lot of fancy quilting. Now we're ready to put the back on. I'm doing an envelope style, so I'm gonna take one of these pieces and I'm gonna fold back about three inches or so and I'm gonna put it straight along here. So I'm just lining up with one of the Patrick pieces so I know it's on there straight. And my selvages are nice and flat and they're finished. So they're selvages, they're not gonna come apart. If your selvages seem to be pulling up a little bit, then you can cut them off and do some sort of narrow hem back here. So that's an alternative way of doing it. But mine's nice and flat, so I'm gonna leave that there. Then I'm gonna take the second piece and I'm going to move it down about three inches. And I'm gonna pin everything together here and I'm gonna take it over to the machine. Let me pin it, then I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I'm just getting everything so it won't fall apart. And if we flip this over, we can put a few more pins in. We're gonna use this line that we stitched earlier as a guide for when we do our next stitching. So all we have to do is stitch right on top of or just inside our former stitching line. So make sure everything is nice and flat. And you can stitch all the way around. You don't need to leave an opening because we can flip it right side out through our envelope back. Now I'm gonna trim off all this excess stuff to within, oh, about a half inch of my stitching. It's okay if you can leave excess here because it'll help fill up the edges of the pillow and that'll look better. Now all we have to do is turn it right side out. We'll poke the corners out just a little bit. And now we can put a pillow form in here. So I just went to Joann's. They have pillow pre-made pillow forms at Joann's. They have them at Michael's. They have them at almost every craft store. So this is a 14 inch and it'll fit right inside here. So just stuff this in here. Make sure you've got it poked into the corners well. And that's why it's helpful to have that extra seam allowance around the edges because it fills up the pillow a little bit better. And I know it looks like I'm beating it up here, but you do want to stuff that in and then squish it around to get everything nice and even. And look, look how nice this turned out. We've got these nice three pillows here. So this is just a great scrap project, or you can make it from layer cake squares like I did. But all these small pieces can be made from five inch squares or from jelly roll strips. So you can just have a lot of fun making these fun pillows. Thanks for watching our video today on how to make the tempting triangle pillows. We hope you enjoyed it. Now it's time for another giveaway. When the winter days get nice and cold and gloomy, I like to do a bright color bright color project. So we have one that you could win. This is called Cutting Corners, and these are Moda Gradients fabrics, and they're nice and watercolory. So it's real easy to enter the giveaways. Just click the link right below the video that says giveaway, and put in your email address, and put in your name, and you could be the next lucky winner. And remember, we can ship this anywhere in the world. Now, if you like our tutorials, and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting!